Well, good afternoon, gang. It is awesome to be back. It is great to see you here today, or at least in my mind's eye. I look at the camera lens and I see you guys sitting quietly in the background. But anyway, thank you very much for being here. Uh, in the past six months or so in my MIA time, I have been tagged multiple times about one particular video. So this tag video is rather old, but it's a good conversation starter. So I think for uh, as far as a video with substance, I think this is a really good um, jumping off point, so to speak, for getting back into doing videos on YouTube here. So I, I think it would be a really good conversation starter between you know you guys and yourselves and also you guys and me. And I just enjoy our conversations together. So with that being said, um, um, if you guys have wondered where I've been and you have missed it, the last video I posted explains where I've been. I will also leave a link that is more in depth on the Feral Woodcraft Facebook page that gives more details about where I've been. I will leave both of those links in the description below if you guys have missed that. Anyway, as far as the tag video, the tag video is the, the name has evolved over the last six or eight months since it's been running around, but it's basically a three by three knife challenge, so to speak. The, the tagger wants to know your cheapest knife, your newest knife, and your most used knife. Now, you guys know me, I can never just take a tag or a challenge and you know take it at face value and keep within the rules. But I'm gonna do close today. It is, it's a special situation, so to speak, so you guys will understand. So, before we go ahead and go run down to the stump top, as old Brian says, and show off some knives, I do want to go ahead and take this opportunity to say that as far as who am I tagging, this, this tag video and challenge is so old that I'm just going to tag everybody. If you have a YouTube channel, consider yourself tagged as long as you haven't done this before. If you want to start a YouTube channel, I highly encourage you. This is a good jumping off point to go ahead and, and cut your teeth on making videos. And guys, if you just want to participate in the comment section, that would be awesome too. So consider yourself tagged, world. Like I said, gang, I can't ever completely follow the rules when it comes to these tag videos and the list videos of what's your favorite or what knives do you use the most, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but this is close. This is going to tackle the newest knife as well as the most used knife because all of these are basically related. Um, so start with the most used. I have carried this Swiss Army knife. I don't remember the model name. I've carried this Swiss Army knife uh, since on our first anniversary 15 years ago. She gave this to me then, and I've carried it every day since then, and I've used it basically every day since then. But in the last couple years, my current job has been pretty hard on it. The scissors are broken on it. The pliers are about to do the same, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm a really sentimental guy, and I don't want to see this get any more wear and tear. So I'm gonna send this back to Swiss Army, have them refurbish it or whatnot. And then this is gonna be, and I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but a lot of guys have you know, their Sunday gun or their Sunday knife. This is gonna be a knife that I carry on special occasions you know, for, ED, for an EDC purpose, something like that, but a knife that I don't want to um, use and abuse anymore, so to speak. I want to keep this pristine because it means a lot to me. So anyway, that being said, I replaced that knife with this knife. Now this one's also doing double duty as, as the newest knife, so this is kind of you know, covering two aspects in one. This knife basically has everything that I need in a multi-tool slash knife, so to speak. The tool that I use the most is the scissors for making up Cat5 cables at work, stuff like that. I and mean, there are other, other reasons, but I'm not going to get too wordy. Making up Cat5 five, cat five cables, trimming Cat5 cables, etc., etc. Um, you know, and I, I also use the pliers a good bit. Um, this thing's built like a tank. This will last many, many years, if not a lifetime. I also, while I have this open, I use a Phillips head screwdriver all the time, um, as well as the flathead for light prying, nothing abusive, light prying, and also for screws. Um, it does have a serrated edge. I mean, I could go on here, but uh, I use the main blade for cutting cardboard boxes, uh, fixing my dinner at work, stuff like that. Um, there will be a full-on review of this. This is a Rook, I think is how you pronounce it. Go ahead and get a close-up of the manufacturer's name there. Get over there. Get a close-up. I think that's coming through. I'm not exactly sure because I can't see because of the sun. But I will put um, I'll put a little title down here as well as a link in the description to this knife. This is a Rook. I think that's how you pronounce it. Rook LD or LP51, I think. Um, awesome, awesome blade. Keep your eye out in a couple weeks for a full review on this. I absolutely dig this blade. I use it every day, all the time. But while we're talking about most used knives, I use this one the most at work. I hardly ever break this out when I'm at home, um, simply because you know I've got a whole toolbox in my laundry room with all sorts of pliers and screwdrivers and stuff that 
uh, quite frankly, you know, a real screwdriver is going to work better than a multi-tool is. So um, this is the knife that I use the most at home. I have used this to, from clearing out corners or angles on making bookshelves to building my son's bunk bed to in the woods cooking food. Uh, this, is a, this has been my true EDC knife since I have laid hands on it. This is a Black Feather Journey. There will also be a full review on this one. I've been very delinquent in getting this up. Um, I have used this knife on a daily basis for at least six months, I would say. So that to say, there will be an extensive workup on this blade coming extremely soon. The Black Feather Journey, you can see there's no rust, but you can see the patina this thing has taken on. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ruin the review by spilling too much about it, but obviously I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty big fan of this knife. There will also be a link in the description to this knife as well. And yes, for those that are curious, I never have gotten around to getting a, a proper sheath for this knife. This is, a, this is a Bark River standard sheath. I believe this came with my JX6, I believe. Now, as far as my cheapest knife, I have thought long and hard about this because a lot of folks that have done these videos are pulling out Mora's as far as cheapest knives, and I want this to be relatively exciting. And I did the numbers, and I do believe this actually has come out slightly cheaper than any Mora knife that I own. So, this is my cheapest knife. It doesn't have a handle on it yet, but this is a knife I made, oh, good grief, probably about a year ago. Um, Joe Honeycutt started putting out uh, Black Feather Woodsman's. Now, this is, I made this longer than that because I, I made this knife before I got my hands on a Black Feather Woodsman. Um, I wanted to buy a Black Feather Woodsman, but there wasn't any available at the time, and I believe he had closed his books at the time, so I thought, you know what, I've got some O1 tool steel, I've got a, a belt grinder, let's go and see what I can, can come up with. Um, this knife, as you can see, it is not the greatest in the world at all. The grind angle, while I did decide to put a convex on it, the grind angle on it is nowhere near perfect. Uh, it, is, it is a very amateurish uh, make of a knife. However, I have used it without a handle on it, and it does function pretty dang well for what it is. So this is my cheapest knife. So that being said, uh, I encourage you guys, if there is a knife out there that you want, and you have even files and some time on your hand, hands. Go ahead and get some junk steel, order some O1 tool steel off Amazon. You can get O1 tool steel in the eighth inch and less thicknesses fairly economically, usually for around 14, 15 bucks for I think 18 inches of it on Amazon. I will go ahead and leave a, a link in the description just for an example there as well. I encourage you guys, if you see a knife that you want and you either can't afford it or shouldn't afford it or you just want to try it, I highly encourage you guys to go ahead and, and try your hand at making a knife. It is very, very rewarding and um, that's one of the things now that I have most of my weekends back I'm really looking forward to getting back into is making knives every once in a while. It's a lot, a lot of fun. Well folks, there you have it. That is my cheapest, my most used, and my newest knives. That might give you an idea about what is coming up on the channel here. There are two relatively large hints there about the direction the channel is kind of sort of taking. Anyway guys, thank you very much for being here today. I've enjoyed being in front of the camera and talking to you guys again. If you have any questions, suggestions, go, f go ahead and down to the comment section. Feel free to hit that up there. Anyway, thank you very much for being here, and I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a great day.